Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a wonderful day. So one of the questions that I always, always get is Visa and MasterCard halal. And that's quite common. Every time I talk about my portfolio or mention these two names, everyone asks the same questions. Because everyone, of course, assumes that these companies deal with riba and of course because of the you know they are dealing with the banks and so on so everyone thinks these companies are non sharia compliant and for that reason everyone goes is it halal is it halal is it halal? so i'm going to try to answer that question today first i'm going to go over the business side of things to show you that it's actually sharia compliant then i'm going to look at the financials to see basically if these companies are actually solid businesses to own well, then we're going to compare the two together to see out of the two which one is actually doing really well in the last five to ten years and then we will look, we'll look at the valuations to see if this company is actually a buy right now then i'll give you my opinion on what i think and then, then at the end i will share with you guys based on zoya whether these two companies are sharia compliant i'll tell you their interest bearing debt interest bearing securities and so on if you like this type of content like i always like i've always said to you guys it takes a lot of time to put these videos together i would genuinely appreciate if you can just press that like button it doesn't cost you a penny of course you join us on this journey inshallah and of course subscribe to the channel and if you get the chance and you can do this okay it will be absolutely wonderful to have you join us on the patreon account where you get access to all the buys and sells you the watch list you get the sharia compliant investing ebook and then you got a discord to full of brothers who are actually sharing very good practices right now so that would be really wonderful if you can do that right like i said the two companies we're going to talk about today is visa and mastercard but before we do that i want to talk about this okay so the earnings reports is happening as we speak so today was the first day that they started tomorrow 3m is reporting now there are a couple of companies that look i'm looking forward to listening to their reports and 3m is one of those companies i want to see if they have settled some of their disputes and some of the lawsuits that they've been going going through i want to find out a bit more information about that situation because that could potentially mean they stock my if they come out and say they've settled or about to whatever then potentially that could help the stock go up quite a bit and then that will give me the chance to sell it because i don't know if this company in the long run if i want to hold it okay j and j is also reporting procter and gamble is reporting tomorrow morning before they open that's tuesday and then after close we've got texas instrument which i own in the family portfolio you got canadian pacific that's actually also reporting a couple of other companies there and then wednesday we've got asml which will be really important to see of course um taiwan semiconductor reported last week and for the because it was a good quarter they said a lot of good things about the semiconductors and so on and for that reason the semis went up quite a bit so it'll be interesting to see what happens with that situation um, companies like Kimberly Clark will be reporting but I'm also looking forward to see what Lamb Research has to say so again another semiconductor company so that we'll see what happens with that um, and then on Thursday we've got Union Pacific reporting Union Pacific in fact today was upgraded by one of the you know banks or whatever and it's basically they've actually said it's quite bullish i think they increased their price about 10 percent or whatever it was from where whatever it was so again that's another company that actually i'm bullish on and yeah so it will be interesting to see what they have to say because it's the new ceo and all of that stuff so i want to see what they come up and what they see in terms of the what they see in the future and kind of thing and then visa one of the companies that we're going to talk about today will be reporting on thursday after the close and then you've got kla and um, also to basically one of the semiconductor companies i'm looking at so yeah there's a few more companies that i own as well that will be reporting the following week and then as we go along for them basically for the next two weeks you might get an opportunity you never know we might get an opportunity to um in, add to the companies that we own or whatever so we might see a bull pack we might actually if basically one of these companies come out for the semiconductors and say bad news bad news and then of course everything might go down we might get an opportunity we might not get an opportunity we will see what happens but yeah i just want to share with you guys if you see a bit of volatility in the market next few weeks that's probably the reason right looking at visa right now it is actually up 23 percent right now basically for the one year and it has a pe of 24 pe of 27 right now now let's have a look at the business side of things okay because that's what we're here for so year end financial highlights so this is was 2023 they reported 32.7 billion um, total revenue that was up about 11 percent from prior year 
net gap um, net income was 17.3 billion dollars non gap net income was 18.3 billion dollars um, they in terms of payment volume that was <laughs> 12.3 trillion dollars that's six percent from prior basically year they are buying back their own shares they process the transaction 212.6 billion transactions 10% up from prior year and dividend a share by buyback um, buybacks if I can speak was 16.1 billion dollars and that's nine percent up from prior year which is absolutely amazing it's a huge company of course so they employ a lot of people and then going back to seeking alpha to what the company does okay and I'll show you in, in a second basically a breakdown it talks about operators as a payment technology company in the United States internationally. The company operates um, VisaNet transactions processing network that enables authorization, clearing, settlement of um, payment transactions. In a nutshell, that's what the company does. They don't really care about the day and basically what you're buying, what you're selling. Well, like um, you know, if you basically get into um, debt, into all of that, they don't really care. They facilitate the transactions that take place. So if I'm the buyer, you the seller, basically that's basically the transaction that happens between us. They they just do it, and because we they um, as the of course the person who issues the banks whatever they get their um, cut from the banks and so on. It also offers credit and debit and prepaid card products. Okay, so they also have the tap to pay and all of that tokenizations, click pay and so on, Visa Direct and solutions. They do a lot of business to business as well. They do business to consumers. So everything they do is more or less to basically facilitate the transactions that happens between customers and so on. So let's break it down. So the revenue details is this service revenue. So and for, for service provided in support for client usage of visa payment and service. So that was 14 point um, 14 point eight billion dollars in the basically the last year so the data processing revenues okay and for authorization clearing settlement and value added and so on that was 16 point um 16 um, billion dollars and international transaction revenue okay and which is earned for cross-border transactions processing and currency conversion activities that was 11.6 billion dollars and other revenues for example cons uh, consistent mainly for value because uh, it's mainly value added services related to advisory marketing certain card benefits and license fees and all of that stuff that was 2.5 billion dollars so that's where the 32.7 billion dollars comes from so whatever everything you see here okay none of these are the they're not dealing with the river side of it okay they are making sure the transactions happens it happens such a way that it's secure and people get their money there's no um, fraud anything like that happening between the transactions and that's the most important thing and I hope that kind of makes sense when we look at also MasterCard which is exactly the, more or less that's the same thing it will also make a bit more sense let's have a look at a bit more information about Visa so as you can see here right now it has in terms of dividend safety 99% the dividend is quite small 545 billion dollars in terms of the payout ratio is very very low 16 percent in growth in terms of the recent and as well as the last five years last basically 10 years or about 18 percent so they're growing this absolutely nicely that's 15 years of increase in that dividend you get two dollars and eight cents for every share of that company that you own now according to the the it might be undervalued according to the dividend yield and theory which is basically right now the the five year average is 0 0.67 right now is 0 0.77 which is basically tells us it could potentially be undervalued at the moment based on P 29 right now is about 27 again that's also what um, seems basically is undervalued um, the financials is part of the financials but to be honest this is technology company that's why financials normally trade very very low PE but this is on 27 right now now looking at a couple of more things earnings per share as you can see is growing nicely free cash flow per share is growing nicely too um, in terms of shares outstanding is declining as you've seen already they're buying back their own shares and total sales is actually growing so their total revenue is growing from 12.7 to right now 32.7 in the last space since 2014 so the last 10 years return on equity is beautiful absolutely 46 percent return on, um, on invested capital 34 percent so 46 percent 34 percent which is absolutely amazing operating margin of 67 percent free cash flow margin of 61 percent 
everything you look at about this company is absolutely amazing and if you look at the net debt to EBITDA for example is 0.05 so it will take this company 0.05 years to actually pay back that um, the, any debt that they have so that's literally that's absolutely amazing we're looking for anything below three but that's absolutely amazing now looking at um, seeking uh, uh, Morningstar valuations so in here you can see it's 260 dollars per share the company has a wide economic mode and total return in the last 10 years when we look at the last 10 years um you when this loads up there we go last 10 years we're looking at about 17 percent total return which is absolutely amazing they're expecting the earnings to grow about 13 percent this year and then next year they're expecting at basically five um the next five years sorry about 13 14 percent which is really huge now looking at this um, you can see Monistar valuation, seeking alpha valuation, discounted cash flow model valuation, discount, um, dividend discounted model, as well as the multiples valuation, which is comparing with MasterCard. That gives me average intrinsic value of $281 per share. Current stock price is 271 That's about 4% here from here onwards difference. And the margin of safety, I put down 5%. But if you want to put 10% just to be on the safe side, okay that's 250 um just 250 ish um per share again right now it's 270 but if we see a dip in the market if the if it reports tomorrow or whatever and find basically we found out the company is actually done gone down quite a bit then you can actually add to that or whatever you've already if you already own it maybe you can add to it if not of course do what you need to do if, if you want to do 15 percent, it's 200 for about 240 ish and again, I don't know if you will ever go down to 240s, but at some point when I was buying, it was actually $210, $220 and so on. So it can go back down to that. So if we see a correction, this can happen. OK, so you don't necessarily need to buy it now, rush it, buying it. OK, but for me right now, because I think this company is very safe, I already own in the, in the portfolio. My price tag is 267. So if it comes down a little bit again in the next few weeks, I might start adding to this company. Now, let's have a look mastercard if you haven't liked the video already please do so because really genuinely helps like i've always said to you guys as you can see mastercard is currently trading 439 dollars per share up about 19 and a half percent basically for the one year and as you can see is very very close to the all-time highs this doesn't mean it's overvalued by the way okay so you just have to bear that in mind and as you can see here wall street is actually stronger buy seeking alpha analysis saying that basically it's actually just a buy now let's have a look at the business side of things okay because this is the really the important part because again it's very similar to visa okay so the core payment business side of it so they got switching which is the authorization that they do for transactions they clear inside of it and the settlement the payment system securities okay they've got the cyber intelligence solutions data and service solutions and processing and gateways okay and then that's the main business that basically this company has so between the acquire between the margin between the account holder and issues all of that and you've got a bit of a description if you want to go to and find out a bit more information about where this comes from go to there basically if, um, if you go to here for example you will see the annual reports you've got the proxy files in there and then basically the the one year two years three years reports from the last whatever years so if you're interested go and do that um, and again, they give you a little bit of description. For example, it's switching and transactions. They talk about through our core pay payment network, we enable the routing of transactions to the issuer for the approval, facilitate the exchange of in fi financial transactions, information between issuers and requires after successful conducted transactions, a settle the transaction by facilitating the exchange of funds between parties by a settlement bank chosen by the user and our customers. Again, that's all they're doing they're facilitating for that transaction you can pause the video and read the rest but that's what all they're doing they, they this company is not dealing with the track basically the debt side of it they're not dealing with the river side of things okay um they all they're doing is basically facilitating for that transaction it's making sure it goes to the right person securely and then you've got the payment network and active side of things you've got additional payment capabilities. so you've got a lot more information in here account to account security on franchise everything that you need to know about the company you can find out through the website if you that's if you're interested of course in this company inshallah right let's have a look at the com bit more details of this company as you can see is dividend safety side of th things we're looking at it very very safe right now again is 0.6 percent dividend yield 400 uh, 410 billion dollars mega cap company which is absolutely amazing now 90 percent in terms of payout ratio 16 percent growth for the for last year for this year 
and eighteen percent in the last basically five years. Last ten years, about thirty three percent growth. As you can see, they have been beautifully growing that dividend, which is really wonderful to see. Eleven years of increase in that dividend, two point six four percent in terms of the annual payout that you will get. Now it looks like undervalued. Again, another similar situation, almost the same as the five year average. In terms of current PE is actually lower than the basically the five year average and looking at things like earnings per share, free cash flow per share, everything is heading the right direction. Um, in terms of shares are standing going down, which is really wonderful to see. Total sales is growing. Again, these two businesses are very, very similar. Return on equity of 170%, return on invested capital 63%. Operating margins of 57% and free cash flow margin of 40%, which is absolutely huge. And net debt to EBITDA right now, we're looking at about 0 0.46. Okay, that's how long it will take this company to pay off its debt. Now, looking at MasterCard on, in Morningstar, as you can see here, their current price is 428. 421 is basically where they think its price should be by the end of this year. It has a wide economic mode. It's three stars right now. And if we look at the total return in the last 10 years for this company, okay, as you can see, here is about 18.5%. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the two companies and then I'm going to give you um, valuation for, in fact, I'm going to give you the valuation first and then I can give you the comparison the two. As you can see here, Monistar four hundred and twenty one dollars per share. So you can also four hundred and sixty eight. Discounted cash flow model gave me four hundred and seventy, which is slightly higher than the two. This um, dividend discount model gave me four hundred and sorry four hundred seventy four hundred ninety, and then multiples gave me three hundred and seventy six. Average all of that out four hundred and forty five dollars per share is what you will get. Uh, where it should be in terms of intrinsic value for the year current stock price is 400 and let's call it 440 so not far off from where we are now it's about one percent different if i now say of course i want to have 10 percent margin of safety which is decent okay then that will be 400 pounds 400 dollars so it needs to lose about 45 dollars if that's basically my pipe by price um now for me what would i do in with this company i'll tell you at the end so let's now go back to here and i'm going to compare the two companies so this is now seeking alpha we, there we go so we're going to compare with the s p 500 as well as this and we will want to see the total returns rather than just the price okay right if we look at the three years first so you can see oops what has just happened let me compare the uh, put visa there okay so the three years as you can see here um this one is 37 percent so visa and mastercard 35 percent. so not much of a difference they actually beat in this basically of course the s p 500 but the last five years 126 for mastercard and 100 for visa and 83 for the s p 500 and in the last 10 years if you had these two companies in the last 10 years you would have made 491 percent in your total of total return the s p would have given you only 170 and visa would have given you 438 percent which is absolutely huge now i really like basic both companies just to give you an uh, my opinion i do own visa so i'm going to show you just for transparency i can show you there we, there we are i'm up 25 percent of 867 percent now according to zoya okay when it comes to visa in terms of business side of things so the business activity screen is 100 percent compliant financial screen so the interest bearing debt is 4.5 um one percent and interest bearing debt is 4.91 percent which is absolutely fine there's no issues with that and when it comes to mastercard it's 99.73 when it comes to the revenue side of things interest bearing debt 4.19 and interest bearing securities only two percent now so there's no issues with these two companies like i said to you early this is what they do okay and there's nothing wrong with the two businesses in terms of our compliance side of things for me they are both seem fairly valued at the moment but because i do own this one if it comes down quite a bit then i will possibly add to it like i said 221 is right now where my average price is i absolutely love mastercard and i'm definitely going to add it to the portfolio but i'm not sure exactly when i'm going to put it on my watch list in the next few weeks and if we see a dip in the market or correction or whatever then i possibly will be adding to the portfolio inshallah moving forward 
anyway i hope you enjoying this type of content sorry to make the video slightly longer but i needed to get through that because i needed to make sure people really understand understand this what is basically what i'm showing you here right now anyway have a wonderful wonderful day assalamu alaikum